Jim Fannin Show Live pop up. A little bit of a new setup here. I'm trying to manage the music in the background. Thanks for tuning in. Shandor. Jim. What's going on, my brother? Thanks for having me back. Thanks it's a uh, lot's in. happened since last time we got together. This is where you can find Shandor. <laughs> Say it one more time the last name for me. Shandor Ligatfalvi. 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 That's right. Ligatfalvi. At Brockbug. <laughs> Brockbug. You... Brockbug, yeah. Catch him there. Dude, um, I'm going to switch over. I'm just got the display up here so people know the, where to find ya. That's right. There I'm you are right I'm, now. What's up? I'm man? here. I'm uh, here to talk about the media. Lower that thing for me. Yeah, just uh, push it right down so we can see a little bit of your fat. Let's talk about. I want to see my. <laughs> yeah, there we it's, go. It's I mean, nonverbal cues. We <laughs> talked about this last time. You kind of have to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dude, with what people is when you can up? See you sent me a bunch of clips. Uh, I have not watched them I yet. I sent you clips. So that's right. You. We got clips. We're talking and about local journalists. Yeah, well, you one specifically in said media bullying. Media bullying. That's what's going on. And I was all over that. There's yeah, plenty of media bullying taking place. I have not been paying attention. So let's well, start to at the top. With. Where is the where is the snag in the reel, man? Well, uh, I got to say, I mean... So for the last month, um, I've been organizing and leading at Hugs Over Masks, and we have a Facebook group. And uh, throughout the course of our activism, we've been consistently misrepresented, um, uncharitably, uh, in bad faith, and I have a lot of it documented. And so we're going to go through some of that. So we're going to be addressing some of the coverage by St. Catherine Standard, Reporter Grant LaFleche. 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 I think it is. Grant LaFlash. La, uh, La is f in the feminine. Okay. Flash is his. Yeah, super, no disrespect to the man's name. Superhero. Just, I wanted, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. And colloquially, I just refer to him as LaFlesh. Uh, that may be incorrect. And I apologize for at least that. But so, you know, so Mr. Grant was on the uh, Walter Senzik's Instagram channel, which is a little odd. I mean, Walter Senzik is the mayor of St. Catharines, and Grant is an investigative reporter. So they're kind of having like a drink together. Uh, yeah, he was some sniff, uh, sniffing on some some whiskey or something. Yeah, there something going sniffing. on. You know, they were both wearing their fedoras. They're nice having a nice chat. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Managed to catch a snippet of that. We got a piece of it, so we can introduce um, today's subject, Grant LaFleche, eh? Oh, and, yeah. uh, this is going to be tricky. This is, so this is the first time for me. Can you do this? Uh, we'll, we'll, is it we'll working? work through it. Yeah, no, I'm just going to. Are we functioning? have to get the audio right. Are you on Twitter? Can I retweet this while it's happening? Oh, yeah, we're on. Where am I? Just go to my page. Shandor, look at Bobby, media bullying. Cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. See? You know, uh, I know what's going on. Yeah, there you go. All right, let's Where's back this up. To a little quiet. And then I think. That's right. Uh, so we we're just listening right. to this little clip um, that I selected and posted, which you know, I think speaks for itself. Uh, just a nice introductory. This is the this is the journalist we're referring to, and that's the mayor, and they're having a little chat in this chat. Uh, Walter Senzik asks, you know, what should we do this Thanksgiving regarding coronavirus? And, you know, Grant says what he says in, in terms of this clip. So let's take a listen if you got the audio ready. I think we should. Yeah, there we go. So we're <laughs> we're going to do a natural react video because we're in the corners. And the is this a react video? Well, we are in the corners. Should and I, do facial the reaction? I have not seen this yet. So let's see how this works. Out. OK, News team of five at the standard. When I started in 1998, we were a news team of 39. Well, it, by perspective, so I mean, if you can imagine, it would be like coming to a council meeting and there's you and maybe a clerk and two counselors to do the work of everybody else. <laughs> <True. You know? laughs> Sometimes <laughs> decisions would be quicker. <laughs> Reduce counsel to the mayor, two people and the clerk. <laughs> um, so it, it, it means as, as we have shrunk, our sort of capacity to do volumes of work has, has shrunk with it. 
And the thing that we had really decided to focus on for a number of years, which was investigative work and stay very kind of on that trolley track, some of that's had to be let go because we, we absolutely have to be on top of the story. And it changes so often that uh, there's almost no time. I mean, whether it's covering, you know, what you're doing at City Hall in terms of uh, nothing uh, measure. I mean, for, for, you're talking about changes potentially to the mass bylaw locally. Quick pause there. Can you do a uh, quick there's pause? issues with the business uh, and and yeah, I'm right. So he just mentions. Just so you know, what he's mentioning there is a uh, is a new uh, ex, uh, expansion to the mandatory mask bylaw in St. Catharines, where uh, lobbies of uh, and elevators will also be included in the St. Catharines mask bylaw. So just so that's. And that's like a brand new thing that they're uh, enthusiastically proposing now. But go ahead and continue the clip. And those sectors, and whether it's the region, whether it's healthcare, I mean, there's something new every single day. True. I yeah. talked to Dr. Hergy um, probably more than anybody else in my life right now, uh, the medical health, which is weird. Uh, and I, is. We, we joke to the more point that we're like, when this is finally over, our what we're going to do with ourselves if we're not talking every day. What's going on in the background? But it, it, it's this dynamic effect? shift and stuff, and you're kind of focused on one story, sometimes at the exclusion of, of everything else. Right. So in talking with Dr. Hergy, um, there's obviously... Uh, right, right. So he, he, he jumps into the undercurrent of... Uh, Which is another clip. So that's it for this one? That's it for the clip. Yeah, so basically, you know, what we glean out of that is... Uh, a sense of the man and um, that, you know, is according to him, his main contact in his life is Dr. Hergy, uh, who we'll discuss a little bit later in one of our uh, follow-up clips. Just a little tidbit we'll have about him a little bit later. Um, yeah, so Why did what do you get out of this? that? <laughs> that was your first viewing of that. I don't think how – I've never really seen a mayor host a journalist in an inter, in a friendly interview before. Um, maybe in reverse, having a journalist hosting a mayor, but uh, I mean, it shows the cozy nature but of the political one of the relationship of they have. Media has been the spread of, of misinformation. Oh, here we go. Has been the spread of um, partisan attacks and personal attacks and lies and uh, people who, um, I, you know, it's, it's like that saying from the Dark Knight, right? There's just some men who want to see the world burn, and they're yeah. playing for it's cool in the Dark Knight. Social media. Good movie. So I knew there was going to be some of it. I think Good what movie. surprised me um, was the volume of it. Um, the, I mean, you almost have to admire the, the devious creativity of it. Thank you, Grant. Um, sometimes people are not trying to be harmful. You know, some of these anti-maskers and anti-vaxxers, they, they don't, I don't think many of them believe... Who's breathing on the mic? Is that the me? No. no. They live. Uh -uh. And they don't think they're putting themselves or their Some families way. at risk, even Back though they are. They honestly believe these things, but as that stuff spreads like a virus on social media, um, the, 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 the news, the, the press, the free press has to act almost like it, our own vaccine to try to hold back that tide, even though we are sometimes hilariously outgunned because there's many more of them than there are of us. Uh, and it's it's reached a point where between the work I published daily, newspaper, commentary, and um, bulletins I put on social media, um, fact checking and debunking has become a regular part of the job. Uh, it, it, much really? Would, if you That's asked right. Me, Mark, so we're going to fact check uh, debunk how, the debunk. Oh, once in a while. Hold on. Let's, so hear, his, let's hear his anecdote. Have to say more than once. Listen, if you wear a mask, you're not going to die from carbon monoxide poisoning. You know, for if, if you think that, I just want people to, have you ever wondered why your dental hygienist has never fallen over dead? while he or she is cleaning your teeth or why a brain surgeon or a heart surgeon can go hours on end and not collapse while wearing a mask because it's not true but the way in which they frame their arguments often starts with a nugget of something real and then expands into a tinfoil hat territory i, I mean i could talk about this for hours if you oh yeah you could it, very well qualified we to you talk would. about the science of mass oh, let's yeah, talk no, grant that makes sense until you really you know okay. take a deep breath and you realize no it's, it's actually crazy but yeah right. it, it, more often than it's I actually crazy. Yeah, so there's a crazy couple man. things in that clip. Um, there's a couple things in that clip. I mean, I want to start with the thing he mentions at the end, which is the, uh, you know, CO2 causing toxic effects and, you know, his, your dental hygienist or your doctors or surgeons falling over dead. 
I mean, I think that you had a guest last week who addressed some of those points, right? Steph Hent, uh, Hentrick. Hentrick, yeah. Right, so she addressed those points in the delegation. She's been speaking on those points. So I think he's responding to her, responding to those points. And there's actually a lot more to it than what... This is an example of a straw man. So he takes the least charitable interpretation of the claims being made and then knocks them down. So if you take the least charitable interpretation of what someone's saying and you say, oh, look how dumb that is, we well, haven't really proven anything except that you're not willing to take a charitable interpretation of what people's claims are. And that'll be the theme of a lot of the things we, we look at here is he's taking very uncharitable interpretations, um, uh, not good faith, what are these people trying to say? What's underneath it? And so that's what we're, we're going to look at a little bit here. Um, I got my baby here. <laughs> Don't run away with the baby. Oh, should we, the baby's running away. No, don't worry about that's it. right. The little baby started making some noise. A little bit of homeness. That's right. Fine. We're all right. We're Let human. Let that kid hang. Um, <laughs> he's hanging. He's just making a little yeah, bit of noise. It's all right. Hi, Unless buddy. he squeals, we should I'm let not him. Gonna hide you. Hanging out here, little monkey, at the Jim Jimbo Estate. <laughs> in the cellar for the cellar session. Yeah, uh, brother, so we're so talking about straw men, <laughs> and, and and in any discourse, the only way to be progressive is to address the steel man arguments, the things that the best version of the argument. So so straw manning an argument. Really doesn't do anything. Maybe maybe yep. the baby should go upstairs. No, it's good, man. <laughs> We're louder than he is. There's okay, no problem. That's all right. This is background noise. Uh, what's this one all about? So, uh, this is this this is probably not in order anymore. Then in okay. terms of your tabs, let's really? take a look at our list. So I sent I sent Jim a list in advance of the clips, yeah. the clips we're doing. Minutes in advance. Yeah. Uh, Prior. Totally busted. Prior. No, not that one yet. <laughs> we'll get there. Let's talk about Doug Ford's press conference. There you go. Where LaFleche mentions how to do for hotspot areas. Oh, how about if tomorrow at 12.01 a.m. we're expanding the masking policies already in place. Oh, that's in the different clips. To the entire that's province. all right. We'll stick with this clip for now. That means wearing a mask when shopping, when the taking public horrible. transit, and when at work if you can't keep two meters between you and your colleagues as much as possible sure 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 so that's I'll, I'll explain what this is here huh? um this clip was last week when uh on on friday on thursday night uh doug ford said oh at 1201 on friday it's a provincial mask policy just declaring it by fiat just tweeting his way into declaring laws and as other observers note the law itself was never updated, so it wasn't true. He just declared that uh, masks were a provincial, provincially mandated, and that wasn't wasn't the case. So I had that clip in there for that reason. But no, the one we're looking for is the other Doug Ford clip. It's uh, it's number five on my list. All right. It's a little bit of a longer clip, uh, but it has. Mo I'll prep prep you. Uh, for what we are about to hear, so this is about this is about two weeks ago, and what you're going to hear is intrepid investigative reporter Grant Lafleche being the first in line to talk to Ontario Premier Doug Ford uh, in this in this press conference, and so uh, here it is. The audio will also be suffering. This is a I think a capture from my phone. No, so no. This is what it's like to be a producer on a radio show. That's <laughs> right. We're, we're Back to work. To I always <laughs> say, favorite saying is uh, tough times don't last, tough people do. We have the toughest people in the entire world right here in Ontario, the brightest uh, people as well. So thank you, everyone. We're ready for the questions. Okay, we'll go to the first question, please. The first question comes from Grant LaFleche with St. Catherine's Standard. LaFleche. Please go ahead. There it is. Hi, Grant. Uh, hi, Premier. Thank you for taking the call. Thank you. Um, you're probably aware, sir, that there are, you know, sort of relates to the overall attempt to kind of bring the numbers down in this province. There are groups that are actively attempting to get people to avoid public health measures. Um, the most popular group known as Hugs Over Masks. Shout um, out. Here in the Niagara region, at least, they're encouraging people to try to spoof 
contact tracing by providing false names and phone numbers uh, when they go to restaurants and other businesses that record that information for the public health unit should it be necessary. And one of the names and numbers that they're encouraging people to use, sir, are your, is yours. So we just want so, to know you, A, have a reaction generally to what these groups have been doing recently and the fact that they want folks to use your name and number to spoof. So before he answers, let me. Health contact rate. Right. So I'll, I'll first I'll address the question, which I have highlighted in one of the other clips. I actually you know, transcribed the question. Um, he claims that Hugs Over Mask was encouraging people to spoof Doug Ford's name and number in contact tracing, which in terms of the verb encourage, it's like not true. There's nothing true about it. The way that this became a news item and then the next day, so Doug Ford goes on to call Hugs Over Masks and the spoofers yahoos in this clip and it became the headline news the next day. But the, the, pr the foundational reason that this was even asked is because someone in the comments said one thing once and in that in the comments they joked or maybe they were serious about it but they were laughing and they said here's doug ford's name and number la 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 well because well, he does give it out he his gives number. his number yeah. out anyway yeah. so it's not like he was being doxxed it's totally yeah. a joke and so so the group consists the group at the time consisted of uh, a variety of posts and a variety of topics and one would think that the the selection of, of posts themselves would indicate what we're encouraging. Also, we released we released press releases and we had signs and, this and is protests. A fa this is a, a public open Facebook That's group, right. right? So anyone can comment, anyone can see any, everything, including the members. I think only members. members can comment, oh. but okay. the, nevertheless, it's not exactly accurate to say that Hugs Over Masks is encouraging spoofing. That is false. A member of Hugs Over Masks yeah, incur you know, in reality. But he then took an individual case and pluralized it by saying they, verb, encouraging. Okay, so th this is the breakdown. This is the media breakdown, the deconstruction of what the question was posed. And obviously Doug Ford, I mean, this is like a, a send it straight down the plate and knock it out of the park kind of question and answer. Um, first in line for the questions, the question sets up Doug Ford to call them Yahoos. So let's you know hear Doug Ford's answer. Click, click. <laughs> oh, we got a, we got a. Oh, there we go. Anyways, I'm in the office till midnight returning calls. I have a ruthless guest. Folks, when I say nonstop, my first call came out at six thirty. But I don't. It's not about me. I didn't give out the, my cell number. This Thanks. is. I always say I play the smallest part. Um, what they're doing? They're they're hurting their family members. They're, they're hurting all the great people, the 14 and a half million people pulling in the same direction. They're like, like rebels. Like, really? You really want to do this while everyone's working their back off? Have you ever, have you ever walked through an ICU unit seeing someone struggling for their life on a ventilator and having their loved ones outside in the hospital that, that they can't even see their loved ones? Have you ever been to a long-term care facility when, when people are, are, are struggling in the PSWs? Are, are out there uh, working their backs off, putting their lives ahead ahead of their own family and, 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 and putting their community first. And you guys want to go out there and act like a bunch of yahoos? Like that's being polite. I'm being polite with yahoos. Guys, give your head a shake. So we're, we're all in this together. You know, we've been on the phone. Oh, the feds, we're all in this together. Smack. Everyone's pulling that's in the same direction. I'm, I'm so proud of how we're moving as a unit. So it's proud. Incredible. He says he's working Absolutely with incredible. the cities and working with the feds, tracing, all in pulling and, in the same and, direction. And testing. We're pouring money, a half a billion dollars. At the end of the clip, the there's the doctor who comes up. 43.7 million into surgeries. Yeah. And, and you want to pull these stunts? You know, good luck, because I'll tell you one thing, 99% of the population doesn't believe in what you're doing. Well, maybe 79%. You know, I'm, I'm here to protect every single person in this, in this province, and I will do whatever it takes to... Uh, protect them and, and maybe I'll, I'll pass the, the question over to Dr. Williams about the, the contact tracing and that and what we're Yeah, and Dr. Williams goes on to say, look, you know, you got to wear a mask. The faster you comply, the sooner you can hug. <laughs> I mean, he does. He does say that. Go ahead. I mean, the clips, the rest of the clips right there. And I think it's actually worth hearing because the it's he says 
It's really simple. Do what you need to do. Do what you're told to do. It's simple. Yeah. It's, that's his, so I think it's actually worth including here um, for some yes, examination. Yes, I would agree with the uh, Premier. It's uh, more than disappointing when that kind of behavior goes on. Uh, there may be some individuals who, for some reason, feel they can't oh. cope uh, in dealing with the issue. It's not that complex. Can't you cope. just have to do what you're supposed to do and do it well. Oh. If we do it well, if we do our contact tracing properly, if we push the curve down, bringing the vaccine that, we're looking forward to that day when you can go around and give hugs and you won't have to wear masks. But the longer we prolong this, the more we have to do it. Oh. So it's more to get along with the rest and do what you need to do in that regard and honor the responsibility and especially protect the vulnerable ones all around you, especially those of your relatives. You may have even younger people- Protect the vulnerable. Immune compromise. Like the old age homes? The, the percent that, of the deaths are happening? That's, I guess, what he's referring to. That's our fault? To. Well, uh, we need to flatten the curve. I, it's, we need to put our ass right. on so that more people in old age homes don't die so, because of our irresponsibility. So, I mean, so so far what we've, we've shown is, uh, well, I, I don't know if we've shown it, but I'll tell you, I've, I've, I have an opinion, and we've started to show it, that the reporter we're referring to is more of a political operative than an impartial, unbiased reporter. Would you be surprised to learn that we've known that for years? I mean, this is no secret in St. Okay, Catherine. Grant LaFleche is a political operative, not a journalist. Yeah, no, that's completely okay? valid, man. Retweet that, Grant. <laughs> okay? So let's uh, take a look through some more of the clips. I think we're, I think we're making good progress here through the material to really sort of la flesh out the situation <laughs> <laughs> all right we'll get to this one in a minute this one's for a little bit later um because we should stick to this so in his coverage this one this one's the one right this is the so not only <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of hilarious actually <laughs> not only did the reporter go fishing through the comments to find his his version of headline news to bring to Doug Ford totally busted. Then in that report described hugs over masks as a group who promotes conspiracy theories such as go ahead go ahead read it what such as it says right there right hugs over masks promotes conspiracies such as contact tracing I can't see it so please read it. Oh, ca contact tracing is a scheme to hunt down Jews. Those words were in print, written by reporter Grant LaFleche, and he invented those words. Where did this? Where did he get the idea for it? Did As I show you in this little uh, oh, okay. screenshot here exhibit on a. Exhibit A, we have a commenter saying, oh, these politicians, I want to hunt them down. So that's a bit of a problematic comment for the person to have said. You can see there on the left. There's the highlighted phrase, hunt down. So that screenshot, Grant posted to his tweeter, tweeter, <laughs> Twitter yeah. a couple days earlier um, when he called out the, for, oh, look at this, the anti-maskers are promoting contact trace spoofing. Where'd the Jews come into it? Okay, then exhibit B. Okay. So you know, Maria made a comment that, and you should probably read the actual... So Maria's comment said it was a way, the census was a way to identify Jews, was Maria's comment. And so what we see is clearly a misrepresentation. Yeah, she says, is this a goof? Skip too many something history classes? Yeah, she's referring to Grant in that comment. Contract tracing back in the day was uh, filling out a census to identify the Jews. Right. So the intention of her quote is very different than the intention of the paraphrase. Very different. Not only is the pre present tense, past tense different, the phrase, the verb, hunt, is actually identify. Okay? So there's no quotes around conspiracy theories to Dude, promote I thought hunt for, down Jews. I, in the beginning, I'm like, okay, are we splitting hairs here? But I don't think this no, is splitting no, hairs. No, definitely. This okay, is not this splitting is, hairs. And so this we is, have a group of hundreds this is what of the people, left does. a diverse group of hundreds of people who have different opinions, who have all coalesced around this thing called hugs over masks. And then you have a political operative who has decided to take straw men, the, the most unrepresentative aspects of it, 
and then to embellish upon that, and then to outright lie. Because it is a damn lie to say that Hugs it's Over Masks... Fabrication. ...is a fabrication. The hunt down Jews, that phrase, never came out of anyone at Hugs Over Masks mouth. Only came out of Grant LaFleche's mouth, or fingertips. And it went to print. So Scott Angus, or whoever the hell the well, editors he this, are... This was in the The Pyramid paper? of Toronto Star, which now owns... Oh, Saint I Catherine see. This Standard. was an article in the paper. This was an article in the paper. This isn't his little tweeter. Wow. This is a print. So in print, they create an article. They create a story. Yahoo's. This is the Yahoo's story. Yep. So he invents the news in the first place, asks a question to the Premier of Ontario using the phrase, hugs over masks, mm. while lying about them, then goes on in print to lie about them. And that's why I'm here. Thanks for having me. No problem. Pull that thing down <laughs> a little bit. I just, you have to see my face while I say this. Damn it. All right. Fix me up. Fix me up, Jimmy. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and, he, and Grant knows full well that I'm Shander Ligatfall, be the Brock University gadfly who spent five years taking on the student union. There you go. You're speaking right into the mic now. Okay, no so why why mind. would he think that I wouldn't take him on? Like he's he think he's he's bigger or more has more impunity than the student union? Did you, did you not have an I dedicated hours and hours and months of my life to taking on that student union, mm -hmm. and he knows it because when I got banned for taking a photo at council, I told him and he snubbed it. Fine, not a big deal. The world was falling apart at the time. We talked about it on on the last time I was on the show. Fine, uh, but. Let's bring it back down. Let's, all right? uh, Let's dial it down a sec. Seriously, we're in a strange time. Um, there's a lot of people not happy about the lockdown. A lot of people not happy about the riots. There's a lot of right. people not happy about the loss of liberty. Yes. There's a lot of people not happy about the unnecessary, and I say that, unnecessary death count because... They think that case, case someone load. is to blame for it. Oh, yes. You know, this, it's unnecessary, right. that unnecessary that these deaths have occurred and someone... Damn you, Donald Trump, and 210,000 exactly. deaths. It's someone's fault. You're bad. Right. You didn't do enough. It's right. all orange man bad in the States. Yes. You know, I thought we were going to get it a lot worse in Canada because of the failure to close our western border to Chinese nationals. Right. Not... Not our own citizens, not people with Canadian citizens that happen to be coming back from Japan, uh, from China. Right. They told us they told us from travel Chinese bans citizens don't work. coming in. They said travel they bans don't work. Yeah. Chris Biddle. And I, I thought for sure that with all these, they weren't, there was no testing. There was no, they said, oh, they're screening at the airports. There was nothing. There was they lied not. to us the whole time. Right. We th we saw the cameras at the airport. But is that there was no the virus testing. There was no thermometers. There right. was not not that that any of that stuff works. Like it, you take Indeed. the temperature, or whatever. What are you gonna do? Right. So I thought we'd get a lot worse. We didn't. And um, the narrative has been frustrating for a lot of us that have experience with guys like this and sure. fake news. I right. mean, you saw the last piece on me. It was it was ridiculous. You know? I finally did see that. It's the last time I was here. It I had was, actually no idea what I'm had gonna, gone down. And I just, you know what? I'm long over it, but I've got the interview. I recorded it. Right. And for what the interview was for 15 minutes, what made the paper? No. It's some very select quotes. It's always One, the first is. thing I said is, well, you know, right out of the gate before I even thought I was rolling. Yeah. Said something about, well, I certainly will acknowledge that I have a difficult time finding a positive place for my hate because i got it i admit it at least you know most people don't but this is what they do but i mean now, i'm not saying that about john laws john laws been fair to me but it was a one-sided sure uh, it was a one-sided story but that's you know the, I mean? the you being ostracized where i'm going with this is not, it's a, this isn't about me but where All i'm right. going with this is why so we've got we've got some frustration We've got some people that don't believe the narrative, that don't want the vaccine, that don't want to use masks, that actually see masks as a danger. Yeah, maybe I'm not going to fall over, but I don't want to breathe 
microfibers in from disposable masks and, and as soon as you touch them i mean there's so many reasons that they're I'm not married. effective okay Absolutely. now they could be effective at squelching a sneeze but sure. i'm not convinced that an aerosol transmission of this disease is that prevalent in fact i know it's not it's all through human contact you touch right. something i touch you we touch something in common. That's how the spread is. Okay. The spread's not. Walking by me outside, even if I'm infected and coughing into the air is not going to infect you unless there's a, you know, a freak splatter in your eye or something. And at six feet, that don't matter. So Absolutely. We could have done all this with social distancing and hand washing and hygiene. I so guess the, just the hand washing the, then. Yeah. The, and yeah, some vitamin just stay, D. You know, keep your distance. Wash your hands. Don't touch doorknobs. Right. Duh. And turn off. Wash the your hands when you get home. Not gloves. Gloves don't work either. No, they don't. You know? But I fell for it in the beginning, and um, I was scared too. And then I'm like, no, you see the stats. I'm like, come on. This is so frustrating time. Where I'm going with this is, and I don't really expect an answer, but your opinion would be nice. Why, Grant? Why? So you've got a group of yahoos. Sure. Rebels, people that are swimming in the opposite direction of the yeah. stream. You've always got them on every issue. Right. You happen to be passionate about it because of your young son behind us here is five months old. Definitely. And yeah. when the mass bylaw ends, he'll be a year old. And I get ends? the impact of him never seeing a public facial expression. We don't want to into go that out. point. Yeah, I don't I don't like taking him out. Yeah. I wonder I like we, taking we him went, out to see you though. We, you got a good smile. We went headlong head first into this mass experiment yeah human experiment yeah. that we don't know the impacts to i think it's going to have a serious effect on our own mental health because when we're out and about we're not present to how important it is to see people's faces even if we're driving by them at a light or whatever right it's a i don't anyway it's a, it's i just wonder isolating. why why is what, like is this just selling papers grant is famous for a make work project for himself. There's no doubt about that. There's, yeah, we had some issues on, on regional council that, you know, were hard to look away from and required some digging, but yeah. the, rep the repetitiveness, even me with my story, every time somebody would re comment on it, it'd make the front page again. Right. It went like that for three weeks. Yes. I don't know how many times they ran and changed the story, took my link out, changed the heading, right. you know, whatever every time there was an edit to it boom it came to the top of the web page sure. oh no i don't know i mean i'm just saying it just kept coming up because it was new news for three weeks it wouldn't die like oh odd. now win comments on it oh now the debbie zimmerman's a member of win and right. it was, it was, you know and then everyone had to make oh, okay so jim bradley makes a comment and walter sensick says something at city council yeah. unnecessary what uh, come on Call somebody's a name. You know, this, this is just a funny thing exchange, about women right? wanting equality, but sure. they they don't want to mix it up in the political field. As soon as you call them a name, you're a sexist pig. <laughs> you know? Wow. Fuck off. Anyways, sorry, bro. Yeah, no, I not at all. You're too young to hear that kind of language. Oh, yeah. Little, Little guy. guy here Five in the, months in the old, lounge. sitting with Jimmy in Fannin the, with a filthy, filthy mouth. Filthy Jimmy Fannin. So, yeah, I just, no I just wonder, it makes me wonder... Why, Grant? Hey, Grant, come on the show. Seriously, I got no problem with the guy. Sure. I mean, I would love to talk to him. I wish that we, he would he would treat me like a person who has. He used to. We used to not hang out, but at least we were work together. You know, I can like try to he was in the media. I was a political candidate. You know, right. he'd show up to my things. I'm sure we've had a beer together. Yeah. At one time, we we're semi friendly. Um, sure. Same with Laura Yip. We worked well, on multiple campaigns and anti-campaigns together. As soon as my politics changed, all of a sudden, I'm a monster. Oh, why? Because I believe in free speech and gun rights? Like, so it's really strange, but I just wonder, like, why? And what happened? Like, wh what did I, I do? I mean, right. I remember back, and I don't want to make this all about me, but back when I was at 610 CKTB, they were at war with the standard. I was still having Grant into the studio Why was when that? 610 wouldn't touch him because they were mad at them because 610 would break a story. Right. And then the standard would run it without citing the source. Yeah, no kidding. Eh? So they were just, they were always constantly, yeah. or the standard would run a story and say a local radio station said, and Tom McConnell or whoever broke the story would go, uh, what? It was my show. 
Like, right. so it was a kind of a, it was a yeah, media thing. Exactly. I had him on the show. I didn't care. I wasn't maybe present at the whole, th- but so yeah, he was a guest on my radio show on 610, but when the, the whole station wouldn't touch him. Mm-hmm. Now, now they won't touch me. Sure. <laughs> no, and I, Grant I think... and the whole, the whole crew, the whole mainstream media and their little business associates and people that advertise on the station, guess who their guests are? Laura Yep. You know, like... <laughs> Anyways, it's uh, it's frustrating for me, but it, it just leads. To, I keep coming back to the question that I I can't find the answer to. I'm sure you don't know it. Why? So well, you got some people. You really think that these people? It's because Orange Man bad. are danger are causing a Orange danger to society. Like they're going to cause them, they're going to cause someone to die because they don't use a mask at Zares. It's so it's fear. My it's just for me. He's making work. He's selling papers. That's, that's, that's all I can think of. And he's no different than me. I he's got to find a positive flow for his hate. So sure. if it's not you, it's going to be someone else. Well, someone I don't next. Know. I mean, uh, I mean, in the interview <sighs> with uh, Mayor See? Senzik, he describes his life as one where he's mostly a shut in. He doesn't go out and see friends or family very much. Um, his primary, the primary person he talks to is Dr. Herji. Um, so I think that the pressures of the, the... So you imagine getting a story wrong when people's lives are on the line is stressful. So he described in the interview that he doesn't... He's a news team that was 39, is now a news team of five. Okay, so he's actually over overwhelmed. He doesn't really have time to go down rabbit holes exactly because he's oh, got Oh, clearly a, he does. Well, he goes down our rabbit hole, I guess. Oh, yeah. I'm just trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't. I'm. Mm. Well, you're very generous, but this clown's I, been around I, for a I'm, long time. I'm actually been... much more generous with the people who bully me than I ought to be, but I at least am willing to stand up and speak out about the bullying instead of just just take it and run. So we're we're gonna uh, continue to articulate because because the this is all ethereal and intellectual. But there's a human side to the bullying, which is what we're about to get to. And that's the story of Lisa. I don't I don't know. Let's uh, see what my list says. Bring up the list. <laughs> Stop fucking telling me what to do, Bring son. Bring up the list. <laughs> All right. We've got... Mayor LaFleche, Grant, Doug Ford, Number Doug three. Ford. Number three. Here we mm. go. Oh, not available to you. Oh, because it's a it's a Grant LaFleche tweet? <laughs> Grant, why won't you block me? Why do you block everyone else? Oh, I'm else? blocked. He's got me blocked from accounts that I'm he shouldn't even know I have control of. What is it? Huh? Why won't I get blocked? I mean, I'm... I'm is it because I don't harass him? Like, I'm very down the oh, line. Oh, you want to be blocked? Well, I'm just saying, like, is he exploiting the fact that he has access to my account so that, you know, you can see what we're up to? Like... Why does he block everyone else who con- talk- who talks to him? Apparently, <laughs> he won't reply to me though, um, and so I'm forcing the issue. If he doesn't want to have a good faith discussion, then we're gonna so we gotta log in as a. I uh, who am I gonna log in as? Oh goodness, he's got. I, I, serious. Can't I you have just a log couple out entirely, and then you'll see the tweet. Uh yeah, but then I'll lose all these things probably. <laughs> um, he like I said, he's got me blocked. So I've got. I've got Jim Fannin, at Jim Fannin. I've got at Jim Fannin show. Right. And I've got at Team Niagara blocked all three. Right. Then I've got. He's done. He's heard enough, I guess. I've got at Rock Our Town, which no one knows. So that you can't I, see this right now. Damn it. Well, you can see it if you're not logged in. <laughs> Rock Our Town, but nobody even, I didn't even tell anyone I was Rock Our Town. Yeah. But I, he I picked it up somewhere, I guess, because I'm blocked from Rock Our Town, too. Right. And what else have I got? I used to have Nature's Hemp, but then that got stolen when I sold the website. Um, right. Let's see. Um, Tweet blog. I'll just try and log out then. We apologize for these technical difficulties. I don't have tech. Shut up! <laughs> no technical we apologize for these social difficulties, <laughs> but some people can't handle other people on Twitter. Okay, here we go. Here so, we yeah, go. you're right. All I had to do was log out. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay, so as we have reported, the anti-mask groups have present a number of false, have present 
have presented. You got it. A number of false. This, this guy thing. is a fucking report. This is a this is a mad. writer. So I think let me just set up the context. Okay, I'm trying to read moment. it. I'm trying to read. Shut That's up. That's all right. <laughs> no. Oh, you want to read it to the group, <laughs> to the uh, listeners? Yeah, no, you can go ahead. I was just being... Oh, that's all right. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll set up the context of what we're looking okay. at now. So we're looking at a tweet from about two days ago. And uh, basically on a couple of days ago, I was on a local stream service, a stream stream show called Niagara 411. And it was a pretty good interview. I got to talk with people who aren't necessarily on board with uh pro-choice mask issues um got to hear me out and i was done by 7 30 and then by eight o'clock this is the tweet that ends up on his account he man he went through our group and found a post that had been posted now this is a bit of a complicated story so i'm going to say up front i was the admin of hugs over masks i am not the admin of hugs over masks now and this post being approved is one of the reasons for that. I didn't approve this post because it's an embarrassing post, actually. So what ended up happening here is, and maybe we'll, for the for the podcasters and for the listeners who aren't on screen. Oh, yeah, exactly. We'll have to just explain what we're looking at. All right. Uh, so this is now, I guess. So Lisa went to no hugs over mass. She went Colburn. to the Na hugs over mass Niagara chapter and posted this. And she posted and she said that she was discriminated against when she went and she was told to leave the store if she didn't wear a mask and she left the store upset because she felt harassed and bullied. And when she described this, she says, uh, now I'm beginning. The, I'm always very, very a stickler on how people actually phrase things. So she says, now I have a new understanding of the treatment that our African American community had to deal with in the '60s and how the Jews felt with World War II. So she makes a comparison by sympathy. Now I understand a little bit of how they felt. So this is an objectionable. As the flesh goes on in this thread, he goes on to really dunk on it. Oh, he dunks and dunks and dunks. So at 7:30, I had a nice presentation on Niagara Four on One. At 8 o'clock, he's dunking on Hugs Over Masks for... <laughs> so he th he says, I think it's a teenager, so I blocked out their name. So 45-year-old, university-educated, world-traveled, journalism award-winning Grant LaFleche just dunked on a 20-year-old from Port Colborne <laughs> because he's a political operative. Because in order to misrepresent... To represent in the most negative light possible the political group hugs over masks as it's represented he he finds the lowest thing he can chirp now the, the interesting thing is here that she has been receiving hundreds and hundreds of harassment messages now she is being harassed her people around the world so it's a pretty dumb post all right sorry lisa it's not the best brightest post in the world and it's not your fault but I understand where you're coming from, but the way you phrased it, these liberals are going to shit themselves over it. Okay? So I didn't want to approve the post knowing that it was... The post also has a selfie in it. Grant LaFleche. Miss, you are not a German Jew in 1940. No frills is not Auschwitz. A mask is not <laughs> a Star of David. Anti-maskers are not being herded into death camps. There is no genocide at play. Neither yeah, you or I can relate in any way to that degree of suffering and pain at all. Okay. Signed, Virtue Signaling. Further, further, as Chomsky points out, as even to enter a discussion of the Holocaust denial. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. And this, Holocaust denial? And this is the from guy who, saying, now I know how the Jews felt. Okay, it's a bad here. comparison. I get it. It's, it's like, it's like, it's... It's really no worse, maybe more offensive to Jews, but it's no worse than using a war analogy in the NHL. You're not at war. It's just an analogy to express where she was coming from. I don't know if she's finished university yet, Grant. She's 20 years old, Grant, and you took her words in a friendly audience and put them in front of a hostile audience. Oh, okay. okay. Right? She said this on our group. And, and he, she's young. Right. She's 20 yeah. years old, okay? Like, oh, I, I didn't know I don't want to be ageist about this, but... 
I heard you say that, but it wasn't sinking like, in. For let, some I reason, mean, I you, thought I mean, this was a grown just, woman. It's not just a grown ass. And he won't contend with the grown ass man who's trying to face him. He'll no. take on her, who's being harassed in public now. Harassed. They found her anyway. They found our group and they started mocking it. You they, should uncover her name. Yeah. And look, there's a comment down there that says, I hope they all get sick. Grant, your audience wants us to die. Okay. It's a public Facebook group, but I cannot determine how old this person is, and I'm not going to contribute to the young woman being harassed by the Twitterati. Well, oh, what? too late. Leave her be. Oh, now, oh, the power of Grant yeah, the flesh. Leave her, leave be. her be now that well, I've called what? her out. Sorry, My point Grant. is only that this kind of argument being leveled against pandemic safety measures. Yeah, measures. Measures have measurements. They're rulers. There's, right? They have, do the math. But let's not get into that. She, he's still going. He, well, because she stood up to him. So he bullied her. I stood up to him and she stood up to him. And, and he just keeps coming and back and twerking. back hard. So he retweeted it. So now it's not even under his control anymore because the other Niagara rant pages. He can't even it. fucking type his own shit. There's so he's many. Mad. He's got more spelling mistakes than she does. Getting and she's a 20 year old still. student. She has since said. She means no disrespect to black people and Jews, just that she better understand their suffering. You're a fool, Grant. What a busted Grant. Coward. Okay? We have This is a reply of from the group leader. I need Jim, I need to describe the kind of harassment that the young woman have received. Okay, do it. Okay? Doxing, canceling, fat shaming. So the people who disagreed with her weren't like substantive about it. They were personal. And they were vicious. Okay? So that is what Mr. LaFleche unleashed on her. Uh, why? Because he's got a political axe to grind with Hugs Over Mask, which was prior led by me, which he never took on head to head. He wouldn't confront our arguments. And what are our arguments? The PCR test has inaccurate results. Hey, Carol Devine, you're, uh, I know you're a really nice person. Carol Devine says, this is a career realtor in St. Catharines. Hi, Carol. She does, she does a lot of business. I would like to know the reason behind the no masks. Oh. Thanks for the heads up. Great question. I won't Great be question, going to Carol. Walmart in the falls. Huh? Walmart? Won't be going to Walmart in the falls. I well. Oh, I this will. is replying to Phoebe that says, yesterday shopping at Walmart Canada in the falls, I saw more than half dozen people walking around the store with no masks on, plus two staff. Shocking. One staff, no mask, wiping down the shelves and checkouts. This kind of defeats the purpose. And Carol is all up on that. She will not be supporting businesses where right. people are expressing their human right to choose not to cover their faith faith with a filthy diaper. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Yes. Carol? Yeah, you're the yeah. uh, micro tyrant of the oh, day. Oh, here's my buddy, too. This is... uh. The counselor's husband. Thanks. <laughs> I right. can't tell if that's audacity or plain ignorance. Well, well you're pretty ignorant, uh, Brian Lydia. So, I mean, I go sell a Jeep or a right. fucking Dodge or whatever it is in Welland. Nah. So I oh, white knighted. I white knighted for Lisa to say. all night. Hmm? I was like, look, she's got a good point. She was discriminated against. Why don't you try to listen to the point she actually has to make instead of. Oh, is this her here? Elizabeth? Elizabeth, yeah. Oh, so she got in on it. Yeah, she highlights the key term, which I got. We wanted to make wow. sure to get clearly. I mean, you know, wow. he doesn't care. He doesn't care about her at all, at all. He only cares about making political points. And then none of this is his job either. This is his hobby time on Twitter with his 5,800 followers. Wow. 5,800 followers he earned by being a professional journalist. And he abuses people. It's, this is this is abusive. This is abusive harassment. Um, and even though she's not completely in the right, contextually, what's happened here is completely wrong. Uh, and she has every right to say whatever the hell she wants. If she wants to make a bad metaphor, a bad comparison to a, a horrible time in history. And he has the right to refute it, except that he knows full well that his he knows he acknowledges that she's young, maybe a teenager, doesn't want the Twitterati to attack. And posts it anyway. So uh, he's fully in aware of what's about to happen when he posts this. Because he knew that this is a new leftist meme. Oh my God, how could she? And yeah, oh my God, how could she? 
And guess what happened today, Jim, and over the last 24 hours? The post, which he's highlighting here, on the Hugs Over Masks group, it got like 400 shares. It was seen 80,000 times yesterday. Hate shares? Hate shares, all of them. All of them were insulting hate shares. All of them. Uh, over so a thousand laugh reacts. Uh, on a, she actually added to the post. She added a little, a little uh, apology and clarification. Three hundred laugh reacts on her apology. Okay, never apologize to the mob. No, never. Never apologize to the mob. Get off your knees. And so when this started, when this started, when Le- and look Leche, at how look at how polite she is. Right, we I love have everyone, to be just like I heck. love you, Mr. Grant. I hate your actions. I'm disappointed to feel this pain again. Hmm. Wow, I can't imagine. And 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 I mean, she may have uh, coping issues, and this is only exacerbating that. So, am I putting people's lives at risk by not wearing a mask, or is Grant Lafleche putting people's lives at risk no, the by ad- bullying them? The admit, well, okay, yeah, the the bullying was there, but then. The admin could have just chosen to not highlight that. Oh, and guess who the admin was? So this is why I have to get into this. I'm the admin. So that means that this smear is on me too. But there's another admin, the other founder of the group, Cullen. And so, I mean, Shelby's right here. She'll attest to it. I saw this post, the one that we're talking about, on the admin page. And I was like, "Eh, I feel for you, miss, to quote Grant. Uh, but I don't know if I want to approve this because I'm trying to promote activism. We had a, a, a schedule of protests. I was just on an interview that well, should be n- listening. Protecting to. her never came into your mind. Well, and like protecting and, her from the mob. Well, I just knew that I knew because we've been hounded by Grant the entire time that he would highlight that post. I knew he would because he would because he did because he would and he did, but Cullen didn't know. Or didn't care and approved it and look I'm here in public I've just left the hugs over mask group over this issue because I have my own integrity that I have to protect and it's against my integrity to have approved that post and then I have to play damage control about it and be like I have to white knight the lady over so I lost 18 hours of my life in the last 24 hours playing damage control on a post I didn't approve and so that there's it's Which like, makes it's me like go you run back a magazine and someone else publishes a story that yeah. you're the editor and someone else Which leads me back story. to what So I had dude, to go. What are we doing here? Like seriously, what are you doing? What do you what do you hope to accomplish? What do you well like at this point it does, like it does when get it gets this messy. Right. Like what do you what what are you doing? Uh, you know, there's uh, always an opportunity to reassess and regroup. Um, my opinion is that the Hugs Over Masks brand is dead. Dead. I don't want anything to do with it as a brand. As a, as a group, as a movement, as a sign, as a t-shirt. I don't want anything to do with it. I'm done. So I'll do what I need to do next, and I'm not sure exactly what that is, but it will be continuing to tweet and continuing to cover the news and to point out things that I think are interesting, and yada, yada, so on and so forth. Um, you know, so I'm definitely done on hugs over masks because of a variety of reasons and this post being the the primary thing like it really really bothered me so the reason it really bothered me is because we had an agreement that i would be the only one approving posts i was supposed to be the only one approving posts and this post got approved under my nose and then all day that the post was sitting there shelby brought me the post her phone to me and said look the post got approved did you approve it i'm like oh man and she was like, what the hell is this? Because instinctually, I don't know, anyone should know that making this comparison is dicey at best. All right. So we got a half dozen other things we're trying to promote at the same time. And the guy is coming at us. You know, I called it I called it chum for sharks. This post was chum for sharks. Comparing Jews in the war and blacks in Jim Crow to masklessness is chum for sharks. And so the post had a life of its own, and as I just described, had 80,000 views in the last 24 hours. So this morning, I woke up and I said, no, like I didn't approve this post, I'm done, and I deleted it. 
and I also deleted a lot of the content I put on the group, and I deleted myself as administrator because <coughs> no, well I no we're welcome to the next new normal because no. <laughs> Wow, man. So that's where I'm at right now. It's a lot to take in, I guess. Um, it doesn't show unity. It's not great leadership. Uh, I don't, I can't, but I can't lead something that I can't manage. And so if the greatest liability shows up in my door, in my, under my nose, so I'm, I'm managing a Facebook group and then suddenly someone brings in like a, a oh, the, you, you got this on screen now. No, it's not up on you. It's not up? Okay. We are. Yeah, so I mean... We can't make this big enough to actually make it worthwhile. Oh, uh, you might be able to right-click view image. Okay. And then just uh, focus on the bottom of it. Yeah. So that's what's going on. I know there's listeners. You know, uh, members of the Niagara Dailies tuned in to the last time I was on the show. And one of them sent me a message to make sure to clarify that, hey, you know, sure he retweeted the smear, but he also retweeted the clarification. Oh. Thanks. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah. On um, page A16, the bottom back. I, you know. Okay. And well, that's, tell what, me that's what happens again and again. This is the MO of the news. You know, they'll put out uh, essentially a lie in the headline, and then the next story two days later will be the bottom of the page, tiny story clarifying. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the tweets. The tweets get, you know, 100,000 retweets, and then the clarification will get three. And it's just like that. Uh, All right, this one's up. We're not going to be able to see the, the uh, yeah. picture too much. but Well, I mean, so what we're looking at, you're looking on screen? Yeah. Yeah, this is a collection of likes that Dr. Mustafa Herji Niagara Region's Chief Medical Officer. The Lincoln Project? Acting. That's right. You understand the Lincoln Project is, right? What the hell? Seriously? So Dr. Herji. It's Herge, an anti-Trump group. Dr. Herji likes two types of content on Twitter. Posts that are relevant to his expertise. You know, other medical doctors and, and experts and stuff. And anything Orange Man bad. Wow. And so here we have a collection <laughs> of Joe Biden oh, tweets. Wow and Lincoln Project tweets, and so on and so forth. Wow. Since I identified this, he's gone on to actually retweet anti-Trump stuff, including things that say hashtag Trump virus. Indeed. So, so... This is the medical... He's the uh, acting chief medical officer of Niagara Region, and he's an anti-Trumper. What a coincidence. Shocker. Shocking. And the person that Grant LaFleche talks to most is... Dr. Herji and Grant LaFleche is Debbie's going to be crushed to hear this. anti-Trump. Uh, and maybe he has his reasons, uh, you know, but <laughs> I'm saying he has a right to his opinion. Uh, well, he's got but his reasons. But it's very what? revealing it's what that opinion is. What, what would his reason be? He's a lefty? Well, yeah. Okay, so, I mean, he's a, he's a newsman. And oh, oh, no, I'm talking about Hershey. Uh, what the, what's, uh, yeah, what's what's his reasons for being so anti-Trump? Well, I mean, as an epidemiologist, he's under he the impression Is he offended by the grab by the pussy comment, maybe? I don't, I don't, he might have been. I he mean, if he has one, maybe he was. Maybe obviously, he's a, there's reasons people are... Maybe he's afeared that Trump's going to grab him by the... <laughs> afeared? The vajiji. <laughs> yes, well, I mean, it is revealing. Mustafa, no, that's a guy. And then, oh, so just to clarify, this isn't just Dr. Herji's like personal account. It's what he calls official account. So it says official account in the description. It's right there in the screenshot at the bottom. Official account. I'm so the out. official account of the acting chief medical officer, blah, 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 blah. You just heard what happened. Okay? You heard it. You know. He likes Trevor Noah. Who doesn't? He's handsome. Well, look at this. I find that if you look real close, Trevor Noah there is blaming Kyle Rittenhouse for being a white supremacist. So Dr. Herji doesn't know that Kyle Rittenhouse was defending himself. Oh, Doctor he knows. He just doesn't want to. Oh, okay. To so Dr. Herji is willing to click like on politically motivated lies. Hmm. Well, you've done some homework here, son. I have done some homework. Yeah. I have done my homework. So, what are we, 50 minutes in? Sorry I agreed to this at all. 
Now we're an hour in. No, no. What are we 50 minutes in? Let's make sure we wrap it up if, uh, if need be. We've got here. What have we talked about today? Mayor Sanzik and reporter La Fleche have a pleasant chat. That's where we started. Mm-hmm. La Fleche admire the devious creativity of it. Uh, and likewise to you, Grant. Grant tweets about Lisa's wow. post, which we discussed. I think that was really the meat of this interview. Um, how Grant asked Doug Ford about contact tracing. So we got into that. Uh, Doug Ford's press conference. Yahoo's. Uh, my tweet responding to the hunt down Jews claim. I think that's libelous, by the way. I think it is. Not that I care. Well, here's Most the thing. The These guys are not. Trump tweets. They are not afraid. Got them all. So we've, they are, gotten, they we've been not, through all the clips. They are not afraid of being sued for defamation. They should be. Well, they, I don't know how they'd be afraid of me suing them for defamation. defamation. Well, they're not, but they they're, should be. Well, I mean, there's. Uh, we got back. you nailed. Uh, to quote a famous conspiracy theorist, we have the documents. We got the receipts. We got the documents. We got the receipts. Biatch. Oh, oh, there it goes. Oh, sorry. Your your email is now public. Uh-oh. I'm going to get doxxed. I'm going to get canceled. <laughs> okay. Doxing and canceling. Sorry. No, we made me I appreciate there. the uh, opportunity to let off some steam and... Yeah, I didn't want to do this. I had a long week, and my sciatic is killing me, and then you're late. Don't I be was, late. I'm terribly Fuck sorry sakes. for that. At least you didn't show up with a big, fat excuse like most people do. So that's I just said you. sorry. Yeah. yeah. I find the excuses are even yeah. worse. Excuses are bad. Throw my baby really? under the bus. Yeah. I have a baby. It was complicated. You know, hang out with your baby. You know, I could have been here 20 minutes earlier if I got my shit together. Oh, boy. Well, um, uh, I appreciate your time, what you're doing too. I'm not sure exactly where you're going or why you're doing or where your head's <laughs> Follow at. Follow me anything at Brock like that, Bug. But, yeah, go see him at Brock Bug. He's uh, let's see, here he is, right here. Sign That's more. right. Yeah, I mean, my sort of my closing thoughts are: I got to make these closing thoughts, Jim. Yeah, hit it. The public psychology, the collective psychology, has now deemed. Groups like Hugs Over Masks, The Other. So we're now incorporated into the new normal. We live in a society where people will walk down the street and step over homeless people, like right over them. It's just part of their normal. Well, protesting masks is now just part of the normal. But it's The Other. Like... like, So becoming the other is in a dangerous position to be in. So what Lisa was getting into about the Holocaust and all that, she's just hinting at that that we're now the other. And that's a dangerous position to find a group of people in, being treated as the other. Because if you become the other, you may act like the other, and you may get treated even worse like the other. And, and we are a little bit afraid for the for the consequences of being the other because there's a media narrative that's clearly saying that the so-called second wave will be due to the non-compliance of protesters. So the others are the ones who are threatening society. Uh, so that I think is very it needs to be a, it needs to be re- referenced. I, I'm not. I'm okay being another, but I'm not okay being the other. And I think we need to recognize that we've been anti-maskers, pro-freedom, pro-choice, anti-maskers have been turned into the other. And that everyone in power and everyone at home is more than happy to allow that to be the case. So we need to change the game hard. Talking about masks to exclusion when we're in a identity crisis as a culture the the iconoclasm they came to destroy our entire society psychologically and then they put masks on us so yeah pro-freedom pro-choice masks have unintended consequences and that includes the consequences to society to freedom so on and so forth but just 
just allowing ourselves to become the other is itself a hazard. So keep myself. keep developing. Keep innovating. Um, You're walking behind me in the cut. Stand up for truth above all. And uh, like and subscribe. <sighs> like and subscribe, man. Like and subscribe. You got me all hot and bothered down here, man. Oh, there you are. It's showing up on your page. I guess you retweeted it. I want to go to this one. Just. Are we off? Are we done? No, no. I want to go to on? this tweet before we leave. What do we got here? Um, just in case some of you might be wanting to engage in the sex this weekend. <laughs> in the sex is nice. If you are wanting to engage in the sex this weekend. Consider doing it through Zoom. Let me see. Can I get the effects up? <laughs> Some of you might be wanting to engage in the sex this weekend. At Jim Fannin. There you go. Thanks for your time, bro. Thanks, Jim. Uh, <clears throat> share it if you like it. Don't share it if you don't. Okay. My thanks to Paul Layton that came in yesterday. We are taking good care of your M1 and Monday. We jam. We might even go live with a few tunes. Peace, love, and hug your neighbor. Take that mask off. I'm out.